Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In the last video, we designed this email subscription box for the desktop version. And in this video, we'll make it responsive. So we'll create a mobile version of this design. And then we'll also add some JavaScript to display this uh, email subscription box when the user visits this page after some seconds. And when the close button is pressed, this should disappear. And we'll also store uh, some value in the local storage of the browser so that once this uh, was displayed to the user, it should not be displayed again and again. And uh, then you can go ahead and add a button on your website, which can open this uh, pop-up once more if the user wants. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's get started. Right, so here is our CSS. So let's go ahead and create a media query. So I'll just add a comment. We'll type media queries. And we'll add a media query with screen size of maximum width 800 pixels. So we'll type at media max width of 800 pixels. So if the screen size is less than 800 pixels, then this is what should happen. So we'll just add email subscription box container. And uh, we want to display the image on the top and this text content at the bottom. Now we had already given it a display of flex. So we can see that the image is on the left and the text content is on the right. Now in Flexbox, you also have a property called flex direction. So we'll just type flex direction and we'll just type column. And now we can see that the image is at the top and uh, the text content at the bottom. And we'll also specify a width for this uh, container. So we'll just type width of 400 pixels and uh, we'll align items to the center we can see right now the image is on the left so align items to the center and we can see that the text content has a lot of padding at the sides so let's uh, style the text content so I'll type email subscription container text content and uh, we will give it a padding of zero and we'll set the width to 100%. All right, so this design is basically for devices like iPad or tablets and so on. So this is for the desktop version and this is for the tablets. Now, when we are on the mobile version, let's see how it looks. So right click over here and inspect and we'll click on this button called toggle device toolbar. And let's go ahead and pick a device from here. So we'll just pick pixel to Excel. So we'll change the width when we are less than, for example, 500 pixels. So right now this has a width of 411 pixels. So let's add a media query and we'll type max width of 500 pixels. And for that, we'll type email subscription container. And uh, we will set a width of 75%. And now we can see that it looks better on a mobile device. And I think that's basically it for the mobile version and the tablet version. Let's open another device. And uh, that looks fine. All right, so let's close this. And uh, now let's see how to display this on the website. So first of all, let me add some content over here in the website. So here in the body, I'll just add a couple of headings and uh, some text content. So I'll type P and we'll just add some lorem ipsum text. And let me just copy this once more and copy everything from here. And uh, we'll just add some content. Right, now we can see that we have this content at the background and uh, we have this pop-up at the top. Now we cannot select anything below this pop-up right now. So first of all, we have to close this and then we'll be able to interact with this content. So let's go ahead and add a JavaScript file. So we'll click on uh, this uh, file browser and uh, let's add a new file and we'll name it main.js. And let's add the link to our index.html file. So here before the body ends, I'll just type script 
src and here we'll type main.js right let's go to the main.js file and uh, we have to reference some things over here first of all we'll reference uh, the overlay so we'll type const and uh, let me just maximize this and we'll type email subscription overlay and it'll be equal to document dot query selector and the class name that we had for the overlay was email subscription overlay so I just copy this and paste it over here and the next thing we need to reference is uh, the email close button so we'll type const email close button equals document dot query selector and the class was email close button all right now we need to display the pop-up once the user visits the page and we'll just wait for a couple of seconds and then we'll display the pop-up but before that we have to hide the pop-up by default so let's go to style.css and uh, let's add some more styles over here so in the overlay we will just add uh, the opacity to zero we can just change that over here in the background color so we have this rgba value we'll just change this to zero for the opacity so now we can see that the background color is not being displayed so the overlay is basically not being displayed and uh, but uh, if you go ahead and uh, interact with this content it is not being selected or anything so we have to add a z index to the overlay so we have to add a negative z index so we'll type z index of negative 100 All right now we'll be able to interact with the content now when we display this using javascript we'll be adding a class to the overlay and we'll call that class active so he will type email subscription overlay dot active and make sure that you don't have any space between these two classes because we need the division to have both these classes at the same time all right so when we have both these classes then uh, we will set the background color to rgba 000 and uh, the value that we had was 0 0.8 and we'll set the z index to 200 to be on the top of everything and we'll also add a transition for smooth animation of all to 400 milliseconds now the next thing we'll do is we'll make this email subscription container fade down from the top so initially we need to have the opacity set to zero and we'll also position it to the top and uh, when the overlay is being displayed then uh, this uh, subscription container should also be displayed so let's add some styles for that so let's go to email subscription container and uh, here we'll type transform translate y and we'll set it to negative 200 pixels so we can see that it will start from here and uh, come down and we'll also set the opacity to zero initially and we'll also add a transition of all to 200 milliseconds for smooth animation now when we are having the active class on the email subscription overlay we want to display the email subscription container as well so here we'll type email subscription overlay dot active and uh, space email subscription container so if the email subscription overlay has the active class then this is what should happen to the email subscription container so let's set the transform to translate y zero so we'll bring it back to the default position and the opacity will set to one or right, so that's it for uh, the email subscription container and we'll do the same for the close button as well so by default the close button should have the opacity of zero and we'll also make sure that the user won't be able to interact with the close button when it is not being displayed so we'll type pointer events to none all right now let's type email subscription overlay dot active dot email close button and we'll set the opacity to one and pointer events to auto and let's also add a transition for smooth animation all right i think that's basically it for all the css so let's go back to the main.js file 
and uh, let's add the code to display this uh, after say 5 seconds so we'll type set timeout now we need to pass two arguments in this function one is a function itself so we'll create a function over here and the second one is the time so it is set in milliseconds so we have to type 5000 so it'll wait for 5 seconds and then whatever code we have over here will be executed so let's type email subscription overlay and we want to add a class called active to that so we'll type class list dot add active and uh, let's go ahead and add the code for the close button so we'll type email close button dot add event listener and we'll add for the click event so here we'll create a function and here we'll type email subscription overlay dot class list dot remove active class so now the email subscription box will be displayed five seconds after the visitor has visited the page and when we click on the close button it will disappear so let's test it out let's refresh the page And we can see after five seconds the email subscription box has been displayed and uh, the close button has moved over here so we'll fix that later first of all let's check whether the close button is working so let's click on the close button and it goes back now to fix the close button i think we have to move it outside the email subscription container so let's go over here to the index.html file and uh, we will just move this uh, button outside this container I think that should fix the problem so let's see so here we can see the close button is being displayed over here let's go back to the CSS and uh, here uh, for the close button we'll just change this to email subscription overlay because it is now outside the container division so now we can see the button is being displayed correctly Alright, so now every time we wait for 5 seconds after going to the web page, this pop-up will be displayed. Now we want to make sure that once it is being displayed, it should not be displayed again and again. So for that, we'll be using the local storage inside the browser. Alright, so let's go over here and uh, when we display this uh, email subscription overlay on the screen, we'll also add a local storage. So we'll type local storage dot set item and we'll give it a name called pop-up closed and we'll just set the value to true all right so now we know this email subscription box is displayed on the screen we'll have a local storage being stored on the browser called pop-up closed so let's uh, test whether it is working so let's right click over here and click on inspect and uh, let's go to application and uh, here we can see inside local storage we have this uh, key called pop-up closed let's delete this and uh, let's refresh our page and let's see whether it is being created and here we can see when uh, the pop-up is being displayed we have this uh, value created over here now we just have to check whether this value is uh, there on the browser before displaying this pop-up so let's add an if condition over here so we'll type if local storage dot get item and we'll just type the name of the item which is pop-up closed and let me just close this if condition right here and we have to negate this uh, condition so we'll type exclamation over here so if the local storage get item pop closed is not available then these two lines of code will be executed or else it won't be executed so let's check it out we'll uh, refresh our page and we can see that five seconds has passed but uh, this pop-up is not being displayed because we already have this key let's delete this and uh, let's uh, refresh the page And we can see the pop-up is being displayed and uh, if you refresh this page once more
the pop-up is not being displayed so that's basically it with this video we had added this uh, local storage to make sure that it is not being displayed again and again all right that's basically it for this video in the next video i'll show you how to add this to a blogger website so if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day